was charged with pornography. Are you my publisher? Do you think my work's pornographic? Of course not. Well, why don't you fight for me? You made enough money out of me. It wouldn't have done you or me any good, Richard. You have alienated your public. In a democracy... Don't talk to me about democracy. Mob rule. The rule of the criminal mob. It's unspeakable. Oh, don't start that again, Richard. England is finished. My only hope is to leave the country. Mexico, Australia, the South Seas. Has got to be far enough away to avoid this contamination. Some movies you go to for escapist entertainment, and others you see to impress your friends at the next grad student's wine and cheese party. Tonight's first film, the Australian drama Kangaroo, certainly fits into that latter category. This fictionalized portrait of writer D.H. Lawrence is based on his novel about his experiences in Australia after World War I. Lawrence, here called Richard Summers, and his German wife are played by the real-life married couple of Colin Friels and Judy Davis. The film follows them as they adjust to their new country and to their new neighbor the Calcotts. Jack Calcott belongs to a paramilitary organization bent on crushing the labor unions and overthrowing the government. He introduces Summers to the group's leader, an odd power-mad soldier named Kangaroo, who wants Summers to use his literary talents to promote their revolution. Though he's attracted to this enigmatic figure, Summers gets in a political and emotional bind when he's approached by the opposing socialists as well. What follows is a lot of talk about political ideals, personal integrity, and random philosophy laced with a mild undercurrent of sexuality. So, you're disillusioned with family life? Somewhat. Then if it's not the family, then what is the building block of your new society? The love of comrades. What we call in this country, mateship. I don't see you as any man's mate. Very perceptive of you, Mrs. Summers. You're quite right. The other building block I hesitate to speak of. Why? It's something which nowadays is only recognized by the dark races and the Germans. I am a German. Then you may understand. What I speak of is the mystery of the lordship, of innate, natural, sacred priority which democracy and equality seek to deny and obliterate. You are a fascist, then? I believe that power should be bestowed only on those who have some natural gift for it and some reverence for the sacredness of it. You... Why do you need my husband? There must be a partnership between poetry and power. I've always been fascinated by D.H. Lawrence, and the biographical aspects and moral conflicts here are quite interesting. Unfortunately, the film is less so. Colin Friel's annoying portrayal of Lawrence as a whiny, self-obsessed wimp doesn't help, nor does the film's total lack of humor or its bland, cliché-ridden direction. I mean, do writers always have to contemplate their existence by the seashore? The film's best element is a fine performance by Davis as Lawrence's wife. She's mostly remembered for her role in my brilliant career and she demonstrates her talents with a convincing German accent while supplying the film with the sum total of its compassion and emotional intensity. Unfortunately, that amounts to very little, making this intelligent but very dull, dry film more suited to English literature majors than general audiences. Kangaroo's lack of bounce earns it a C+. The Last Night. We are going to party. You like? I'm not mincing words with this one. Not only is the all-nighter the most embarrassingly pathetic release by a major studio so far this year, its title aptly describes how long it must have taken to make. By the way, it stars... Susanna Hoffs, America's hottest female rock singer, in her motion picture debut. With all due respect to Madonna and Cyndi Lauper, she's the lead singer of the Bangles, and this turkey could cause her career to cool off very quickly, say a good 10 or 20 minutes. What's worse, this is directed by her mother, Tamar Simonhoffs. Thanks a lot, Mom. No Mother's Day present this year. Set at a small California college, this latter-day beach party glop follows the graduation eve shenanigans of Hoffs and her beach blanket bonehead friends. To demonstrate the film's credibility level, Hoffs plays the class valedictorian. Boy, they must 
must grade on one hell of a bell curve there. If that isn't enough, she's gone through four years of college without a significant romance. I guess there aren't any guys at good old Surfer U who want to discuss Nietzsche on a moonlit shore. Sure, Hoffs is incredibly cute, and in her music videos, she displays a Betty Boop charisma, but here she seems extremely shy and scared to death, almost like mom forced her to appear in the movie as punishment for not making her bed. With her Minnie Mouse voice, Hoffs makes Annette Funicello seem like Catherine Hepburn. Witness her passionate, screen-searing delivery in this love scene. CJ, haven't you ever been really crazy about someone and you just don't know how to say it? No. Oh, maybe once, but it was a long time ago. Mm. God, babes are so ridiculous. Any guy would be flattered if the chick had the hots for him. Really? So I should just tell him? Yeah. You, you get hot for Mickey Leroy, aren't you? God, no. I ridiculous. Clearly, Meryl Streep has nothing to worry about. To Susanna's credit, however, I think Mama Hoffs, who also co-wrote the screenplay, should take most of the blame here. The film is so grainy and poorly lit, it must have been shot on toilet paper, and it moves at a snail's pace, making the feeble acting, unfunny humor, and deadly dull drama totally unbearable. Normally, I'm Mr. I'll sit through anything, and the last picture I walked out of was Barbarian Queen two years ago. That is, until the all nighter. I've seen too many bad teen movies and this was the last straw. So I left after about an hour and 10 minutes of agony. I saw enough to convince me that the last 20 minutes weren't going to be Academy Award caliber and I hated what I saw so much that even an F is too good for this thing. Hell, there wasn't even any good rock star skin. Too bad there aren't any letters after Z. I'm John Hopsis doing Hollywood before it does me for Out of Focus.